There's a very simple problem that for a hundred years mathematicians just accepted as solved, and yet no one seemed to question if this solution was actually correct. Turns out it wasn't. And there's a version of it that still hasn't been solved to this day. It is the problem of Malfatti circles. Imagine three non-overlapping circles inside a triangle, each of which has to touch its neighbors, and each of which has to touch two sides of the triangle. It was believed that any three such circles inscribed within a triangle would together maximize the total area of the three circles. And intuitively, they do look optimal, but they are not. And the worst part? The proof that they aren't is not even that complicated. In the year 1803, Gianfrancesco Malfatti asked what seemed like an innocent question. He had a prism made of marble, and his goal was to carve out three cylindrical columns in order to maximize the space and not waste any marble. So what shape do those columns have to take to maximize the total volume removed? Malfatti assumed that the solution to this problem was given by three tangent circles within a triangular cross-section. Malfatti's assumption seemed to be so elegant that everybody just accepted it. By 1811, French mathematician Joseph Diaz Gergone had published it widely. And in 1826, Jacob Steiner, a giant in geometry, published a construction method that popularized it even further, using synthetic geometry. Around this time, many geometers in Europe tended to favor synthetic geometry over analytical geometry because of their philosophical preferences. They basically believed that synthetic geometry preserved purity, visual intuition, and the true elegance of geometry. Jacob Steiner was one of the biggest spreaders of this view. His work on the Malfatti circles was more than just another mathematical advancement. It was his own way of emphasizing the power of reasoning purely geometrically, without relying on algebra or coordinates. To make it clear, analytical geometry, which is also called coordinate geometry, maps geometric figures onto algebraic expressions by placing them in a Cartesian coordinate system. It lets geometric problems be translated into equations, and then to be solved using calculus or some kind of algebraic method. Analytic geometry is a great tool. But to some classical or pure geometers like Steiner, it felt too much like algebra in disguise. These mathematicians tended to favor synthetic geometry, which works with geometric primitives like points, circles, lines, and all of this by using logical deductions and constructions. Synthetic geometry uses methods which involve compasses and straight edges, and don't have references to numerical coordinates. If you guys are enjoying the video, please do not forget to like it and to subscribe to the channel. For example, say we want to find the center of one of the Malfatti circles with radius r in an acute triangle ABC. We could first solve it analytically. Let's define a Cartesian plane with origin at point A. And the triangle has sides 4, 5, 6. As a consequence, we can write all vertices in terms of their coordinate pairs. A and B are easy to find, but we need to do some math in order to find the coordinates of C. Using the Pythagorean theorem for these two right triangles, we can write these equations. That's a system with two equations and two unknowns. Check out the PDF link in the description to see how we solved it. Now, I remind you guys that we're looking for the center P of this circle. Since its radius is R, it follows that P has this form. We just need to find the x component of point P, and then we're done. Notice how this length is r. This length is also r. And since the circle is tangent to the sides AB and AC, we also know that these are 90 degree angles. Look at what we just did. We found two congruent triangles. Both of these sides measure xp, which corresponds to the x component of point P. In other words, what we're looking for. Using the formula for the tangent of this angle theta, we can equate it to its opposite side, which is the y component of point C, divided by the adjacent side, which is the x component of point C. This way we can find the angle theta. Another thing to notice here is that we just split the angle theta in half, 
And using the formula for the tangent once again, but this time for one half of theta, we can equate it to its opposite side, which measures r, divided by its adjacent side, which is the unknown xp. Finally, applying the appropriate inverse transformation, we find the value of the x component of point p in terms of the radius r. Beautiful. Again, check out the PDF link in the description to see these calculations in detail. Now let's solve the problem with synthetic geometry. But Sophia will be the one to tell you guys how to do it. In synthetic geometry, coordinates are forbidden now. We can only use purely geometric concepts, so no algebra or trigonometry now. And by the way, we'll need to use a compass here. Start with the same 4, 5, 6 triangle as before. Take the compass and open it to any length less than 5 to ensure the arc stays within the triangle. Place the compass point on vertex A and draw an arc that intersects both sides AB and AC. Next, place the compass point on the intersection with AB and draw an arc inside the triangle. Repeat this from the intersection with AC so that the two arcs intersect at a point Q. Use a straight edge to draw the line AQ and extend it. This is the angle bisector of the angle A. By construction, the center of the Malfatti circle near vertex A must lie along the angle bisector AQ, because the circle must be tangent to both AB and AC, and such a center must be equidistant from those two sides. Pick a point for the fixed radius R along the angle bisector. Now make a random arc with the compass that intersects AB twice. After that, place the compass point on one of the intersections and make a little arc. Do the same for the other intersection. And then connect this new point with point P. This creates a perpendicular segment from P to AB. This allows us to draw any Malfatti circle and to pinpoint its center P given a radius R, and all of it without any reference to coordinates. Anyway, the problem is beautiful, but there was one little issue. Malfatti's assumption was never actually proven. He just believed, following his intuition, that mutual tangency equals maximal area. In the 1930s, a few mathematicians revisited Malfatti's original work, and what they found was really interesting. For certain triangles, especially tall, narrow isosceles ones, the Malfatti circles didn't maximize the area at all, and they showed a counterexample. Eventually, a method was found that did work. It's called the Greedy Algorithm. We'll discuss it briefly here, but for a deep dive into this super interesting subject, check out the PDF link below. Here's the idea. Place the largest circle you can inside the triangle. Then place the next largest in the remaining space. Then a third in what's left. Pretty simple, huh? In tall triangles, the Greedy method gave almost twice the area of the traditional Malfatti circles. If you appreciate what we're trying to build here on YouTube and you want to support our work, please consider becoming a member of the channel. Thanks for that. So why wasn't this discovered sooner? Well, a part of it was visual deception. The Malfatti circles look so perfect. In an equilateral triangle, the difference in area is barely 1%. It's almost indistinguishable. But in skewed or tall triangles, it makes a really big difference. The Malfatti circles are clearly wasteful in that case. And what about a formal proof? So can we prove that the greedy algorithm is always the better option? In the 1960s, numerical methods finally proved it. The greedy algorithm always outperformed the Malfatti construction. And the proof came in 1968, when it was firmly established with rigorous proof that Malfatti's method is never optimal. Not sometimes, not even in equilateral triangles. It's never the optimal method. In 1994, the greedy algorithm was proven to always produce the maximum area for three circles in any triangle. But wait, we've answered the question for three circles. What about four, five, ten? Here's a twist, we still don't know. The greedy algorithm is very successful for three circles, but it hasn't been proven for any higher numbers. We think it works, it might work, but what if intuition is deceiving us again? The problem of placing n area maximizing circles within a triangle is still unsolved for n greater than 3. We're still guessing, just like Malfatti did over 200 years ago. If you want to know more about it, we linked some papers in the description. Now, another problem that is mind-boggling is the weird connection between drums and differential equations. So check out this video in the channel. 
right here. See you guys there.